Hey guys, what's up? This is Monarch Caius, and if you're looking down and saying, wow, he already did this deck, um, this is actually a complete revamp of the last deck profile that I had. Um, I remember the very, in the last video, if you guys will watch it, I said something about this deck having inconsistency issues. Well, that is definitely a thing of the past, because I've been looking at a lot of frog deck frog or well, frog monarch deck um profiles on youtube and a lot of them um they don't have the problem with inconsistency and i noticed the biggest thing is they run like a billion frogs you know what i mean and uh the only reason i didn't run the as much frogs in my old one is just because i mean i liked having so much better cards like for but the only problem is they were good for a turn and they weren't good in the long run which definitely hurt me because basically if i got dark hold or somebody messed with one of my frogs i was done it was game over there was nothing i could do about it so i was you know i was definitely tired of that so i definitely revamped this deck i really hope think you guys will like it uh if you guys don't like it or you guys would have a suggestion how you would change it i would definitely appreciate that you left a comment because uh, I'm really depending on a lot of you guys to give a good input on how I can make this deck better. So, of course, I'm never going to take out BLS. Uh, I don't I don't even care if he gets banned. I'll go to every tournament with BLS in there just because he's just that good. Like, yeah, he's overpowered, but come on. He's just so good. Like, it's BLS. Like, uh, So, yeah, of course, the BLS. I mean, there you go. Uh, I actually run two Light and Darkness Dragons. Um, <clears throat> I think I ran the exact same in my old one, but a, a huge thing that you'll see next that I, uh, definitely change is I'm running two Light and Darkness Dragons, but I'm also running a Christia. Now, the reason this is significant is because my other deck, there was no way I would run the three level eights just because of the fact that there was no way I could, you know, have enough resources to get that many cards out. If I relied on my soul exchanges, you know, I couldn't attack, so it was really slow. So I can actually run a Christia. I was almost running about run, thinking about running another Christia. The only problem is, is when when she dies, it goes to the top of the deck. So I mean, it's you're basically always gonna have it once you get it out. So I'm not gonna run three. Um, next card is a Gore's best hand trap in the game, just for its psychological effect. Like, I mean, if if you just, I mean sometimes I'll duality it and if it's in my hand it's just just the fact that it's in my hand is gonna like open up so many plays for me just because they don't want a 27 attack monster on the field with a token like come on nobody wants to deal with that next I run true trags uh no nothing really different with the trag I just I don't I just like the fact that it can be huge since I'm pretty basically always gonna have a lot of cards in my hand because most of the stuff that I do uh plays that I run are from the graveyard in the field so there's nothing really involving my hand too much so that's why I like it and I there's sometimes I can swap out level stuff uh three Caius uh it's I mean it's, mon it's the monarchs come on you gotta have Caius uh I mean he's just a badass I mean look at him he's just fucking oh my god uh definitely great especially if you're facing dark decks just ridiculous uh three ryza uh i love ryza uh, it, i think ryza is just the funniest card because it's gonna it messes with uh players for the turn you bring him out and for the next turn just by the fact he top decks so i mean you're gonna bring him out and you're gonna top deck that monster right there which gives you already one less monster on the field or one less spell or back row you have to deal with or and then the next turn like if you top deck something horrible that they were really planning on using for that turn you just made them top deck that so they're not gonna top deck something like a dark hole that'll mess you up you know what i mean so i love ryza you're really good. I run a single Jinzo. I actually main deck a Jinzo. I know a lot of people that play Monarchs don't. It's just, um, I, I don't, I mean, even in mirror matches, Jinzo's still a 24 attack monster. Like, he's still got that buffness, and a lot of decks still run traps. So, I think it's just smart to main deck a Jinzo, because if worse comes to worse, he's still a dark in your grave, and I just like Jinzo a lot. Um, I run a Dark Dust Spirit, and I still run the Dark Dust Spirit just because uh, it's just, it blows up the field and he comes back to your hand. And since you have the tree born, he's just, you're just going to do that every turn. So there's a lot of decks that like to spam the field as much as they possibly can. And this eliminates that just because unless they have a card that, you know, blah, 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 it's just, you know, it's, it's going to happen. Like it's just going to happen. And it's just so good because it just blows up the field and it sets up your moves. 
Uh, I, st I still run the two Kaiku just because I think this de this card is just too good for this deck. I mean, uh, if you tag and if especially in the mirror match or if you're playing, you know, a lot of decks that run around the graveyard, you're going to keep banishing monsters from the grave. You can keep attacking them and then they can't banish monsters from their own graveyard or your graveyard. And you can't you can still banish cards from either player's graveyard, but they can't do it. It's just that's why it's so good. I run two tour guys just because I run a lot of rank threes. Uh, and it's also a dark straight to the grave after you detach. I love that. And uh, it's I love it for the rank threes. Because rank threes, I mean, all the rank threes have different things they can do. You know what I mean? It's like the rank three for me is the most versatile of all the of the ranks. I run three Swap Frog, just like the other deck. And, I mean, Swap Frog is the main player in this deck. I mean, the fact that he can special summon by discarding a frog is ridiculous. I love that so much. It gets, it gets you so many plays, and then he pops back to your hand, so you can keep special and summoning him if you have frogs in your hand. And which, in this deck, you're pretty, basically always going to have frogs in your hand. Uh, here's something that I definitely didn't run in the other deck, is the three Swap Frogs. I mean, just by adding the... Or, uh, sorry, uh, not Swap Frogs, the Dupe Frogs. Um... I can tell you definitely uh, the consistency ratio has gone pew, skyrocketing up ever since I added these in. Be just because, I mean, it's more frogs for you to discard with Swap Frog. It's more targets for Ron and Toten. It's And it, when it, it's basically, you know, it gets destroyed or sent to the graveyard and you get a search. So sometimes you don't have a swap, you have a dupe, you'll just set it. Since it has 2,000 defense, most of the time, first turn, they're not going to be able to kill it because they're going to have like a Thunder King or something like that. And, uh, oh, I guess Thunder King would kind of fuck this card up. But any card, you know, that's just like 1,800 normal summon. Can't really get past that. And it's really good because then you can distribute it next turn. I run two Ronins. Or Ronin Totens. And the only reason I don't run three is because the fact that this isn't a frog that you banish. This is a frog you want in your graveyard that you banish other frogs with. And that's the main reason Ryan run three. You don't really use his effect other than the fact that he can special summon by banishing a frog. Because I know he has another effect. But I don't really, I don't think I've ever used that f in my life. And then I run the two Treeborns. I mean, Treeborn is just the tiniest monster, but he's just a boss. You know, he's just a boss. He's Treeborn Frog. And uh, I just like him. He even got his little boo-boo on his chin, but, you know... He's just so cool. I mean, he just a special summon during the standby phase. I'm actually waiting for the day when this card gets banned. Like, I'm telling you the truth. I'm, I will dread the day. But I feel like somebody's going to find... I mean, they already had the frog the frog loop. But, I mean, somebody's going to find a formula for a Monarch deck or any frog deck. And they're just going to ruin this card. Because this card is just too good. It's so amazing. Um, then I run three Veilers. Where last time I only ran two. I actually just recently picked this up in a trade. I think I actually traded, like, I want to say I traded a Smashing Ground for it. Ultra Rare Smashing Ground for a Veiler. And I was just like, he because I was he's looking through my binder and I saw the Veiler, but I, you know, I didn't really figure it out. I'd go for it. And then he goes, uh, well, I'll trade you the Smashing Ground for the Veiler. And I was like, oh my goodness, yes, please. And I was really, really the, definitely the only one in there. But uh, I actually like Veilers just because of the fact that it does its effect as a Veiler. But since it's a tuner, I actually use more Synchros now. And uh, it's really good, and especially with combination with uh, Treeborn Frog. That will make a certain tuner that I'll tell you guys about. <laughs> then there's Battle Fader. Uh, he's just a complete special summon and negate the attack and the runs the battle phase and he's a tribute. Oh, I wish it went to the graveyard instead, but it gets banished when it leaves, which kind of sucks. Two creature swap, which is amazing combo with Treeborn Frog because he just special summons and if they have one big monster on the field that they just wasted a bunch of resources to get out, you're just gonna take it. Like, that's just so funny to me. I love creature swap. I would never take it out, you know what I mean? Uh, enemy controller, you have to have it with Treeborn Frog because he's just special summon Treeborn Frog, Frog, activate enemy controller, tribute your frog, take their monster. And then it's, since it's still standby phase, since it's a quick play, you get a special summon your frog again. So you just tribute their monster and your monster, and it's like a plus a billion, you know what I mean? I run a duality just because sometimes you get a bunch of frogs and you you might not have any monarchs, which is very rare nowadays, actually, with this deck. I run Dark Hole just because, I mean, it's Dark Hole. You're going to always need a Dark Hole at one point in your life. The Gore's token, uh, it's just... You know, for gores, of course. And then I run the two regular tokens just because sometimes I'll sight in a dandelion. Then it's a slacker magician. And then after slacker, it's a formula synchron, which is really good to make with a veiler and a treeborn frog. And I use that with a monarch on the field to get stardust out. I run two gachi gachi. Actually, I'll just do it like I did last time. I run two of the gachi gachis. 
Uh, since I run so many level twos, might as well. Uh, I run a Giga Brilliant. I never bring him out. Leviathan Dragon. Uh, I bring him out actually occasionally if I just really want to get a lot of damage in. Acid Golem, really just to get over big monsters, and I contribute him, so he's not that big of a problem on the field. Melody is just a light, and sometimes you know, the double attack on small tokens and stuff like that. Tim Temple, amazing against Zen Mains, because I hate Zen Mains, but I still run a Zen Mains. Um, <clears throat> then it's Levier, and if it seems like I'm going really fast because I have a certain time I can do with the video, so it's, it gets hectic sometimes. But I run a Gauntlet, la a gaunt gauntlet Launcher. Uh, I just like it. it's not a once per turn, so you just detach one and just pop something off field, so you can do that twice. Sword Breaker, uh, Photon Strike Bouncer, uh, which is the main XYZ of this deck, to tell you the truth. And then number one is Stardust Dragon, which I can actually run, which is amazing. So yeah, guys, this is definitely the revamp of my Monarch deck. If you guys like it, please leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you guys want to see. I'm doing a common box top five series. And uh, leave a like on this video. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you very much. Peace.